Hi there and welcome to this video tutorial in the how to model series. Today we are going to be talking about cutting equipment. At the end of this tutorial you will know the do's and don'ts of cutting with knives, you will know how to cut flat materials from model making and you know some of the health and safety that is associated with the use of blades. Remember these are rules of thumb, you are ultimately responsible for how you use them. This is a cutting mat, always use a cutting mat when cutting materials. They are available in many sizes, from A4 size right up to A1 size. This is a tabletop. Never ever use a tabletop as a cutting mat. This is a scalpel, generally used for finer cutting on smaller parts. This is a cutting knife, is used for cutting, making deep cuts on larger sheet material. Remember, safety first. Never leave blades exposed when they're not in use. Always retract the blade like this uh, or else place a cover over it. These are rulers. Rulers come in all shapes and forms, all different lengths. Some rulers are made from plastic, some rulers are made from wood. The plastic and the wooden rulers are good for measuring. That is it. Never use plastic or wooden rulers as guides for your knife when cutting. The knife will cut into them because the knife is sharper than the wood and the plastic and it can actually cut into the ruler which could actually ricochet off and cut your fingers. This is a steel ruler. Sometimes you will get steel rulers and they will have a cork backing on them. The cork backing gives grip and the steel ruler has a hard edge. It is a good tool for using as a straight edge for when cutting straight lines using a scalpel. They are available in a range of different lengths from 15 centimeter long up to 50 centimeter long or even in meter lengths. So they're available, the smaller ones are harder to hold, they can tend to move quite a lot because they're too short. When a ruler has a cork backing it's raised up off the material. This can often create a shadow. This shadow can give a crooked cut and it, make it makes it also difficult to see the line that you're actually trying to cut to. Remember the 10 most important things when cutting with rulers and knives is your 10 fingers. If these get cut off, they cannot be replaced. Remember, keep your fingers in a safe position, press firmly down on the ruler, and push down on the cutting tool. Take your time and don't try and cut through the material in the one go. Okay, now I'm just gonna give a quick demonstration on how we actually cut using the scalpel knife. The example I'm going to use is similar to what is in the model, the cottage model. So I'm gonna be cutting out this little door opening here. Uh, there's two of these in the model. There's also a similar method that you'll be using to cut out the four windows. Okay, so the knife I'll be using for, for cutting this is a scalpel knife. It's good for small, intricate work like working in the corners here. Uh, there's a little rule I use when I'm cutting it's the one, two, three, four pass rule because when you're cutting with a knife, especially on thicker material. You don't really want to cut through in the first go. The next thing that's most important is that you actually use a very sharp blade. Never use blunt blades because they actually require more force to cut through and the cut you get from them is not as neat. And the third thing is use a finger safe ruler where you can. You can see this one here has a groove and this groove actually allows my fingers to sit in so I can put downward pressure on the ruler and use the knife in a safe manner without it ever actually coming up and getting in contact and cutting my finger. Okay. So the door opening, as you can see, there's two corners here. The process for cutting the corners is we're going to start in the corner and work into the center of the piece. And then we're going to turn it around and we're going to start in the opposite corner and work in the center of the piece. We never actually cut straight across to cut out a door opening like that because your cut actually extends beyond where you want to actually cut which is actually weakening the piece so we'll cut out this door opening here now so you line up the edge of the ruler as close as you can to your line
like so. And I put the very tip of the knife right into the corner. And I just slowly pull back with the knife. That's one pass. Two passes. Three passes. And four. We'll go off the other side. Repeat the same again. Knife into the very corner. Light first cut. Light second cut. Third cut. And fourth cut. And I can leave and go with fifth just to be sure. Now I have to deal with my two corners. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in this corner here and I'm going to work my way into the center and then I'm going to turn around the piece and I start in this corner here and work into the center. So line up the ruler into the corner Two passes, three passes, four passes. Make sure you get the very tip of the scalpel right into the corner. And for the final side, right into the corner, one pass, two passes, three passes. And four passes. I have to see if that worked okay. You see it slides out there nice and easy. I got a nice clean cut for my door opening. Now the fact that I'm finished with the scalpel what I usually do is I get a wine cork, I leave it down on the table and I just push the tip of the blade into the wine cork. To keep it safe so if anyone's leave their hands down it they can't get cut if i have a disused blade get some masking tape and wrap up the sharp side of the blade in the masking tape and i dispose of it that way so no one can actually if I throw, I throw this in the bin, no one can actually cut their hands if they were to put their hands in the bin after the blade. Okay, thank you.